If you've done any sort of development at all, you've probably heard this term before, Docker. But what is Docker? What's it used for? And why do we need to use it versus something else? Hi, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a product marketing and developer relations expert, and I'm here to make your product and your marketing just a little better. And today I'm going to introduce you to something awesome, Docker. By the end of this video, you should understand what Docker is and why people want to use it. So first off, what is Docker? Well, the easiest way to explain Docker is actually to explain the problem that it's solving. So there's this common joke in developer circles where you develop something really, really cool and then you try and share it with someone. And that person says, oh, the software's broken. And the common answer is, well, it worked on my machine. And while that might be fine for small homebrew projects, it's not really okay for production systems. So the problem that we had to solve was, how do we make sure that things that we develop are actually replicable and usable across multiple different environments? And the answer was, don't. Don't make it work on all environments. Make it work on one environment and then share that environment. And that's the basic idea behind Docker. So Docker is a platform that packages your application and all of its dependencies into something called a container. Think about a container as like an isolated computer that doesn't have a physical form. It has all the libraries, the software, the dependencies, has everything you need to get going. So you can share that container and you can be pretty sure that as long as it's compatible architecture, you can run that application and it'll run just like it did on the system where it was developed. And for a lot of people, that's gonna sound a lot like a virtual machine. The difference is that virtual machines use operating systems, whereas Docker uses the kernel of the system that it's hosted upon. So it's really fast, it's really reliable, and it's really easy to get going. And that also means that the containers are super lightweight. So how do you get started with Docker? My recommendation is to download Docker Desktop. It's an application that makes working with Docker much easier than having to learn the command line. Although the command line does give you a lot more control, so it's a good idea to eventually transition there. But for now, with Docker Desktop, you start by building a Docker file. It includes the dependencies the libraries, the things that are needed to make that application work. Once you have your Docker file, you can build or compose your Docker image. So Docker builds an image from that Docker file, and then you can run that image one time or hundreds of times or thousands of times. Each container is isolated, but super lightweight. So it's really, really scalable. So why is Docker such a big deal and where do you typically find it? Docker is really popular because it helped devs bypass that it works on my machine problem. By packaging your application with everything that's required to make it work, you can then make that application more portable. Multiple people can work on it, you can spin up additional instances when you need. When one image can't handle thousands of users, you can spin up hundreds of images. And because containers start fast and use few resources, you can run hundreds of containers even on something like a laptop. You don't need a bulky VM or a server farm or anything like that. Now in practice, Docker powers a lot more than you might know. I guarantee that a service you've used today used Docker at some point or currently uses Docker to manage a server stack. So that's Docker. It's a lightweight, powerful, and portable way to package your application with everything that's needed to run. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a like, comment, or subscribe, and tell me what topic you'd love me to cover on a future quick tech. This has been Christopher Sandoval, and I'll see you next time.